Hi friends. I'm here today on this Wednesday. It's a red for red Wednesday. So if you don't have your red on yet, I hope you can go find some really quick. On Wednesdays, we wear our red to show that we love our public schools, even if we're not allowed to be there right now. While I'm celebrating this wonderful Red for Ed Wednesday, I also would like to share a story with you. This story is called Emmanuel's Dream, and it's actually based on the true story of Emmanuel Ofoso Yeboa. And something I noticed is on the back, it says, one person can change the world. So let's look back at our cover again and see if we notice anything about Emmanuel. Anything that might be different about him. And I wonder who he's going to change the world for or how he is going to change the world. This story takes place in West Africa in a country called Ghana. Here, you know how we see on our maps and school, there's a star by the capital of that country. The capital of Ghana is Accra. Let's read Emmanuel's Dream by Lorianne Thompson, illustrated by Sean Qualls. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Hmm. What do you notice about his father? Does he look happy to have a baby boy? Why do you think he's not happy? Many people thought he would be useless or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort and she named her first child Emmanuel meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back two miles each way on one leg by himself. At first, nobody would play with him. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches, his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot. Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Godwin pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard, but finally he rode. How do you think he's feeling there? Do you remember how you felt the first time you were able to ride your bike all by yourself?
When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market. And Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. What does that mean? To support them. Who supports your family? Does somebody in your family work so that they can make money to pay for your apartment or your house and your food and your clothes? That's called support. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope, but there were so many people and none of them would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg, and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Let's find out about his plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then Emmanuel wrote to the Challenged Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike, plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride he persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot into a flip-flop attached to a pedal, and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through rainforests, over rolling hills, and across wide, muddy rivers. He pedaled past Odom forests and plantain farms and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as, as trucks roared past on the narrow highways and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamal. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag on a shirt printed with the words, the pozo, or the disabled person.
Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. What do you think is his message? Why is he riding his bicycle all across his country? Hmm. The farther Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered, able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came out, some for the very first time. A young man once thought of as cursed was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things and one person is enough to change the world. Over here, there's a quote from Emmanuel, and it says, In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. And I was thinking, that might be a good topic for us to write about today in our journals. We have a lot of time that we could be doing a lot of good thinking about anything we're learning during this experience. And right now, I'm wondering, if there's any challenges you're facing, how do you feel about them? And what are some solutions you can think of to your problem? Maybe we can write about those. Maybe you've already had a very hard challenge in your life. Could you write about how strong you were when you were facing that challenge? What did you do to overcome it? I'm going to be working on that today as I write in my journal, but I'll be thinking about the next time I get to see you guys and we get to share our journals. Bye friends.